Hello and welcome to It's About Time, a show where we go back in time to bring someone back for half an hour of quality entertainment. Today we decided to go back to last year in 2017 and bring back Mac DeMarco, a popular indie singer-songwriter. But before we go to that, let's run the titles. To start off the show, Matt DeMarco is in the studio waiting, waiting to perform a song for us. This song's from his 2015 album and is called Another One. That was great, but before we get into the inter interview, we've got Kenny with a quick recap of the year of the news in 2017. Thanks, Rob. Right now, the state of Los Angeles streets are hectic as thousands of protesters march on in support of vi victims of sexual harassment. Max is over in LA now and has been observing the march all day. Let's take a look. The atmosphere here is really empowering. The emotion is tangible. It's clear to anyone standing here today that these men and women are extremely passionate about their cause. To see everyone coming together today for the sole purpose of supporting each other and fighting back against something awful 
is really inspiring. The march today began in the heart of Hollywood, next to where the Academy Awards take place, and proceeded for a mile until it reached a podium that had been set up for a rally of speeches. The people giving the speeches included Harvey Weinstein of Cuba, Lauren Savan, and Oscar-winning producer Kathy Shulman. Marchers today were armed with t-shirts and signs printed with powerful slogans. One 52-year-old woman carried a sign that read, I was seven. We've been silent for too long, she said. Another woman said the march felt cleansing after years of not being taken seriously about abuse. As we followed the march through Hollywood, there wasn't a single silent voice. The crowd chanted, Harvey Weinstein is a joke, woman workers just got woke, and survivors united will never be divided. This march was inspired by the social media campaign that has everyone talking, the Me Too movement. This movement went viral last month in October, trending initially on Twitter after actress Alyssa Milano used the phrase in a tweet encouraging sexual assault victims to tweet the phrase Me Too as a way of raising awareness for sexual assault and harassment. This tweet was made after the, sec uh, after the Harvey Weinstein sexual harassment scandal in which many women in the film industry reported incidents with Weinstein. Since the publication of the original accusations, new allegations against Weinstein have snowballed, and despite denying all allegations, it seems like he's the most hated man in the world right now. Thanks, Max. In other news, US President Donald Trump, who was elected earlier this year, has three days left of his 12-day trip to Asia. The longest trip to Asia by a recent president. Trump is hoping the trip will help... Uh, Trump is hoping the trip will help apply pressure to North Korea as he focuses on resolving the nuclear crisis. Also, police say they'll have to give up on minor crimes without major funding increase. The Home Affairs Committee was told on Tuesday that forces across England and Wales will lose a further 6,000 officers by 2020. That's it for the news. We'll go back to Rob. Cheers, Kenny. Now, before we get to the interview, we've prepared, we've prepared a short documentary about the life of our guest. style of music is most commonly referred to as indie rock, however Mac himself described it in the past as jizz jazz. So essentially all of the uh, rudimentary elements of, of a great pop hit are here. Can, very confusing lyrics. Um, I'm, I'm not sure he really even understands the, the Dolce Vita at all. Um, longing, sadness. Uh, he's all alone in the Dolce Vita. And uh, he's, he's pleading, which, uh, yeah, I mean, he's leaving it a little bit open-ended for you, which is probably, I mean, it could be a woman or a man in, his, in Ryan Paris's situation. Um, but he leaves it open-ended. Why? So that I can feel his emotion. I can, I can put this, I can paste this song onto my own life, and I can feel his longing in the Dolce Vita, and I feel his pain, and that's what good pop music is made out of. It's made out of pure human feeling. During high school, DeMarco was a member of several bands, but his debut in the music industry wasn't made until 2009 after he moved to Vancouver. He and his band at the time, who had named themselves Make Out Videotape, decided to self-release the album Heatwave, which ended up selling out of its limited 500 unit run. do the music thing. Never wanted to play guitar when I was a kid. Oh, got a family full of musicians. Very unappealing. I was like, screw that. I'm not doing that. They're trying to put me in lessons as soon as I was old enough to walk around or whatever. So I was like, nah. And then picked one up one day while my friends were playing. Turned out I could do it a little bit. It was interesting. Right around the same time I got into, you know, all the classic rock stuff you get into as a young man. And then, uh, yeah, got hooked. Max's mother Agnes raised him and his brother Hancock on her own after their father left. 
when Mac was just four. When asked what Mac was like when he was young, she said he was a good kid and never got into much trouble. She said he'd get told off for stupid things like the time he got busted for sitting on top of the high level bridge, but he'd never act tough or get into fights. Agnes described raising her two kids as a challenge to do alone, but never as a burden. She said they had no money, but a great house. She would do whatever job and they just had a lot of fun. Touring for a while with a band named Japan Droids, Mac moved from Vancouver to Montreal to begin recording as a solo artist. Often failing to find work as a musician, he would have to come up with creative ways to make money. This involved participating in paid medical experiments and working on road paving crew. His co-workers in road work hated him for being too weak. In an interview with Clash Music, he told them he saw those jobs as just a way for him to keep doing what he wanted. Just made music. He said he'd do a crappy job for a month and then he wouldn't have to work for three or four more months and he could just work on music. On the 9th of January 2012, record label Captured Tracks announced the signing of Mac Marco. Early in 2012, he released his debut LP titled Rock and Roll Nightclub. This album is filled with DeMarco's trademark experimental style featuring a number of skits and songs containing pitch control vocals. One of the songs, Moving Like Mike, was featured in an ad for the American supermarket Target. In an interview he talks about the ad saying, the song comes on for three seconds. I made $15,000 for three seconds. That's pretty funny to me. Rock and Roll Nightclub impressed his new label enough that they agreed to release a full-length follow-up album. This release was known for two. In this album, Matt shifts his style from the crooning vocals of his previous LP for a brighter sound. Two, Mac's fan base increased exponentially. His next album, titled Salad Days, was released two years later and received even better reviews. In Mac's latest album, titled This Old Dog, he strays away from the jokes and takes a more serious tone. For example, the song My Old Man is all about his relationship with his father. A man who chose alcohol and drugs over It's a real talk, it right. This is a, you have a complicated relationship with your dad. Is that the best I way? I do, I do, but I'm not trying to vilify the guy or, or crucify him or murder him or anything like that. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand because there is a certain thing where there's a there's a father figure and, and just understand that relationship and what it's supposed to mean and what it is and where I'm at in it. And, but you know, God bless you, Dad. If you see this. <laughs> Would, uh, how would you characterize the relationship between the two? Yeah, of you? It's pretty much not one, but it's fine. That's fine, you know. It's okay. I mean, well, is it? That's what I'm trying to figure out. You know right. I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it is what it is. And you got to roll with the punches. Now I'm here with Mac DeMarco. Mac, it's good to have you. It's good to be here. So why don't we just get straight into the interview? We saw in that documentary that you originally never wanted to get into music. What was it that made music so appealing to you? From the moment I picked up a guitar and started playing it, I loved it. The guitar's one of those things that you can just pick up and play for fun. But I think what drew me the most was it's when you played something and you played it and it, sound, it sounds great. So obviously you found that 
you had an interest in music, but what really pushed you to pursue this career? Like, because it's obvious a c risky career choice. Like, not many people make it as a professional musician. Well, everyone's always telling me to follow my dreams, and I know if I didn't try my hardest to achieve that, I would spend my whole life wondering whether I could have made it. So I knew I had to. I know it mentioned in the documentary that you spent time with a few different bands, but what was the thing that really pushed you to move to this sort of career? When I was playing part of a band, I never really got the opportunity to create my own songs as much as I do now. Obviously every band has arguments as well as a solo musician. I have no one to argue with, so that's good. I love creating music with an alternative style, so something that can cause disagreement. So what is the case of an, an argument being a thing that ultimately ended up pushing you towards becoming a soloist? No, there wasn't any big fights or anything like that. Just like little disagreements here and there. I think I just enjoy being on my own while I create music. It's a very personal process for me, so being on my own just helps with that process. So in this career, what is the, the song that you're most proud of? It is probably in the song Chamber of Reflection that I made in 2017 in my album Salad Days. And um, the sample um, is quite, uh, quite recognisable. It's been used by other artists. How do you feel about having the same kind of like sample as other artists have used? Well, actually, it came from the melody is quite similar to this Japanese instrumental where I took heavy influence from that. And that melody is just very, such a nice melody. And I think other artists have realised it's such a nice melody and joined on the bandwagon. So do you think that's better than the other ones like Travis Scott has used it and Quavo? I think they've all used it in their own way. I was mm -hmm. like Travis Scott raps over it, I yeah. sing over it. That's a good one. That's a good point to be honest. Well, um, I think that's all, t all we have time for really. You better make your way over to the studio really quickly. In a moment, Mac is going to give us one last performance to play us out. So, in the meantime, whilst he gets ready, we'll talk about, um, well, he's going to sing his, uh, wait, no, sorry about that. He's going to play this song, This Old Dog, from his most recent album. Sorry for that. But um, I'll have to say, from what we were talking about there, I have to say Chamber of Reflections is one of my favourite songs from his, to be honest, because I love the sample, the, the sort of um, weird vibe from the song. It kind of, um, it's really chilled out. But, all right, now, off to the studio. So confused, you don't know what to do. Afraid she might not love you anymore. Though she says she does, hasn't lost your trust. Who could that be knocking at your door? Must be another one. Must be another one she loves. Be another one, must be another one she loves. Feeling so confused. To do, afraid she might not love you anymore. All she says she does hasn't come through. Just as that old knocking comes to stay, must be another one. Must be another one she loves. Must be another one. 
must be another one. Must be another one she does. Must be another one. Must be another one she loves. Must be another one. Must be another one she loves. Thank you for that performance. That was really enjoyable to watch, but it was all, it kind of hit me on a bit of an emotional level. But to talk about here is Kenny. Hi guys, I'm back from YouTube. Um, I must say, what what a man! Mm -hmm. I would Definitely. say that was just a moving, emotional performance. I've never seen anything quite like it, and I've seen a fair Neither few acts in my time. It was quite yeah. something else. So. On a level, what would you say about his sort of style? Um, I think nowadays, you know, everyone's everyone just likes to follow the mainstream. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of people producing the exact same stuff, but he he brings something else to the table. It's you know, something different, something you don't see that often, and I think that's that's really really good. I I, I like that. Well, what about you? What are you thinking? Well, I like um, like how nowadays there's a sort of like mix in um, genre like I've heard these new uh, styles called vaporwave or uh, is it lo-fi or lo-fi that kind of style that really chilled out thing and I really enjoyed listening to it and I think Matt DeMarco really fits into that sort of category um, anyway on a different note uh, kind of uh, I know you're a bit of a film fanatic yourself uh, uh, yeah anything new coming out you're looking forward to well I can't wait for the for next uh, 2019 I can't wait there's so many massive films coming out next year the Avengers 4 there's um, uh, the new Star Wars Got um, loads well of Marvel I'm ones. really looking forward to mid 90 but I think I think they have something they can show us <laughs>
that was very interesting. I'm particularly looking forward to Aquaman. Me too. We now have Micah, who's going to play us out one more fi one final time. Thank you, everyone, today. Thanks to Micah for the performances and Kenny for the news report.